Welcome everyone to Quantix Building Products webinar on the Energy Star version 6 updates. Today, we'll be discussing energy efficiency drivers, diving into state, local, and utility incentive programs as they pertain to Energy Star updates. If you haven't already, be sure to visit our dedicated resource center at www.quantix.com slash energy star for more information and tools. With that, we'll begin our presentation. My name is Carrie Sheets, and I'm the Trade Show and Events Specialist at Quantix and your moderator today. I've been with Quantix for three years and in the industry for more than eight years. Today's webinar will summarize Quantix's first three presentations on Energy Star and then specifically discuss incentive pro pro programs that can leverage in your sales discussions that pertain to the Energy Star version 6 changes. Our presentation will last about 30 to 40 minutes today. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Please be sure to disable pop-up blockers on your computer for the best viewing experience. You can adjust your screen view in the lower left-hand corner. If you are having trouble viewing the entire slide, click on the Fit in Viewer option. If you have questions for today's speaker throughout the presentation or if you are experiencing technical difficulties, please message me directly using the Q&A feature to the right. You can also send an email to quantxpr at quantix.com with any technical issues. We'll be monitoring that email throughout the webinar as well. We'll have two polling questions throughout the 30-minute webinar. To participate, please answer the questions that appear on the right side of your screen. Don't forget to hit submit so we can see your answers. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Rick Jackson is the Director of Government Relations at Quantix. He is an active member of the NFRC and WDMA and has been key in the development of industry standards. He has extensive knowledge in the Energy Star changes and has put together a great presentation that summarizes what we've discussed in previous webinars and breaks down state, local, and utility incentive programs. Rick, take it away. Thanks very much, Carrie. By now, I think everybody that's probably on the webinar today has already made uh, their decision uh, in terms of why they should continue to participate in the Energy Star program. And at this point, you're probably looking at alternative uh, solutions to uh, making your windows meet the criteria. But just as a, a brief recap uh, from previous presentations, the uh, Energy Star market share continues to remain extremely high even up to 2012, where the uh, ARA tax credit had already uh, uh, sunset, and we still have 81% of replacement and remodel windows uh, sold being Energy Star labeled product. New construction has slipped a bit back to 69% from its high up in the upper 70s. Another consideration that builders are certainly becoming very aware of and concerned with is the uh, demand by new home buyers. This is a study conducted by NAHB uh, a couple of years ago, and they found that Energy Star rated windows was the seventh most uh, requested uh, feature in new home construction with 35% of consumers demanding it and 54% of consumers saying it was highly desirable. Uh, at this point, I would say that consumers are well educated on the benefits of Energy Star and particularly Energy Star building materials and that is being translated into builder demand as well. So just a recap of the first three uh, webinars. The first, uh, we talked about the changing criteria for Energy Star, and I think the two most significant aspects of the changes that are upcoming. First, the northern zone doesn't effectively take effect until January of 2016. And in the northern zone, EPA is continuing the trend toward offering more equivalent categories of performance where solar heat gain is offset against U factor. Again, the higher the solar heat gain, the more free solar energy in the cold months, and the lower the U factor, the better insulating property of the window. So uh, essentially, all three of these equivalencies perform at the same uh, energy consumption level. The other big change was the consolidation of the north central and south central around the 0 .30 uh, U factor criteria. The second webinar was uh, essentially talking about tools that you might be able to use to help uh, sort out the variety of, of uh, options that would be available to any window manufacturer. And in the Quantex Optimizer, there are over a million combinations of frame, glass, gas, spacer, uh, and configurations within the glass, such as doubles versus triples. 
which just gives you the tip of the iceberg in terms of options that might be available to uh, making your window perform at the levels required for the next generation, next version of Energy Star. Uh, the Optimizer is a free program available as an app on the iTunes Store, and also uh, there is a, a live version of it on the Quantix website. Uh, it is an estimator. What it allows you to do without spending significant additional dollars in terms of modeling to go in and uh, uh, model a variety of scenarios for your window product. Also, it's available in a custom version, which is a private view for manufacturers that would like to put their actual vinyl profiles into the program, uh, Quantix can do that for you, where you are the only one that can see the combination of your specific vinyl products and all of the various glazing options available to you. The third webinar really addressed or attempts to address the issue of maintaining uh, a competitive advantage, which is going to be highly critical with such reasonably significant changes in terms of the northern zone criteria. We talked a little bit about how the EPA determines cost effectiveness uh, with a simple payback calculation. And uh, in this calculation, uh, they took a specific example of a home in Binghamton, New York. So not a, uh, a very cold climate, probably more of a northern moderate climate. And the equation essentially deals with the incremental cost of the uh, changes to a version 5 window, upgrading it to a version 6 window. It also takes into account uh, the cost of complying with version 5 versus a code-driven uh, version, uh, the number of windows, and the uh, energy savings over the period of time. Uh, so in this example, we had a $34 cost upgrading the window from version 5 to version 6. We had a nominal $20 cost going from code up to version 5. The house contains 22 windows, and the annual energy cost savings are estimated at $158.33. Now, again, this is a calculation done uh, by EPA, so I think highly credible numbers, and the payback would be approximately seven and a half years. So, again, you could plug in your costs here. You could plug in the number of windows and the potential energy savings for a climate zone in your region, and you could estimate what the payback would be. EPA's target was to get the payback below uh, 10 years. Now, what's really interesting in the analysis that they did is that they took a look at three categories of manufacturers that had submitted. Eight manufacturers submitted actual cost data, and they, they bracketed them into high, average, and low cost in terms of the incremental cost to change to version 6 criteria. And when they did the estimates, they got a range of anywhere between nine and a half years and 13 years for the payback. Now, keep in mind that the example I just showed was for one location, Binghamton, New York. This is an average for the entire northern zone. So you've got a variety of, of climate regions involved here. Uh, the big deal here is that some manufacturers certainly could hit the target below 10 years for the payback period on average across that uh, the northern climate zone. Others struggled to get below 11 years, and the high was 13-year payback, which is actually a 37% higher cost than the low-cost average. So if you're looking at your specific products, I encourage you to continue to look for the optimum solution to the problem in terms of getting the lowest possible cost and uh, lowest possible payback period for your windows. Uh, we also looked in the last uh, presentation at the different uh, options in terms of categories and what the U-factor improvement would likely be as well as what the incremental cost upgrade uh, to that specific U-factor improvement. And so we see here that uh, glass is one of the best performing uh, can develop up to a point, almost 0 .05 uh, improvement by adding an additional OE surface on surface four in a double. Spacers, uh, a relatively good choice, more because the cost impact is relatively small to upgrade the spacer, but it can achieve up to a 0 .02 uh, U-factor improvement over other warm edge spacers in the market. 
a high performance frame, almost a 0 0.03 improvement. Uh, cost to upgrade is starting to increase here. Foam filling uh, regarded as one of the better choices in terms of upgrading the frame actually delivers a relatively small incremental improvement of 0 0.015. And gas filling, uh, going from argon to krypton, can generate a pretty significant improvement in U factor, but by far one of the most costly upgrades. On the far right-hand column, you can see what the upgrade cost per 0.01 U factor improvement would be, but I caution you to just keep in mind that uh, most of these are not selective. You can't actually just implement the 0 0.01. You have to basically make the entire improvement at the cost in the second from the right-hand column. Terry? Great. Thanks, Rick. So before we get into the incentive portion of this presentation, we have a quick polling question, which is located at the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And our question is, which webinar topic have you found most relevant to you? Our past three webinars are listed, including this one. Please click on your answer in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and hit Submit. We'll give everyone a few seconds to respond and for the results to calculate. And while we're waiting, we also wanted to mention that this is our fourth webinar in our Energy Star series. We are planning to have two more after GlassBuild that talk to Quantic-specific solutions regarding Energy Star requirements, one on IG systems and one on window and door system solutions. We'd love to hear your thoughts at the end of the presentation on these topics and what you would like to hear regarding these topics. Check back on www.quantix.com slash EnergyStar for updates on dates and times for these presentations. So let's go back to the results, and it looks like um, most of you feel that C, our component impact webinar, was the most helpful uh, to you and your customers. So uh, Rick, what do you have to say about this? I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Kerry. I think that is really the, the challenge right now, is how do I choose the specific components that uh, I'm going to implement changes to to uh, meet the requirements? And, by the way, uh, considering future potential changes as Energy Star moves on to version 7, which we know for a fact uh, work is going to begin this November at, uh, at EPA. So. We don't have any idea what the uh, improvements in terms of performance are likely to be, uh, but we do know that they're going to continue to advance uh, the program and that they've already got sights set on uh, version 7. So let's get down to energy efficiency incentives. Uh, we all know that the R tax credit had a significant impact on our industry. Uh, many people think it saved uh, a lot of window producers from going out of business. On the other hand, uh, a lot of people are concerned that it created uh, a hangover effect that actually has slowed the recovery of the residential window market. Uh, but there are still incentives available out there, and we've gone in to investigate what uh, potential incentives are available today and how you might uh, go about uh, identifying ones in your market region and uh, take advantage of those. Uh, the first website uh, that I'm going to mention is by far, I think, the most uh, comprehensive in terms of investigating what kinds of incentives are available. Uh, both federal, state, local, and utility incentives are contained on the dsire.org website. Uh, there's a link to it on our website at Quantix. And uh, here you're going to find that just under residential windows alone, and rebate programs because there are other types of incentives available. There are 37 states that have programs uh, on the website. There are more than 190 individual rebate programs that are listed with detailed criteria, incentive amounts, application forms, as well as links to the actual program websites. I'd encourage all of you to actually go in and drill down to the actual websites for the programs as some of these have uh, expiry dates. Uh, in fact, there are quite a few that are, are due to expire uh, before the end of the uh, federal fiscal year uh, by the end of October. So I, I would check into those to make sure that you know if they're still uh, going to be current going forward. Many of them don't have an expiry date, so they, they appear at least to be evergreen. There are more than 320 programs that exist in 43 states if we include low-cost loans and tax incentives, and most of these are uh, sales tax type incentives. So there are quite a few programs out there. Almost every state in the union has something to offer to consumers or to uh, window manufacturers and sellers in terms of incentives for uh, replacement windows. Here's just a quick list. I'm not going to go through it of the number of incentive programs. 
And these are specifically rebates by state. Uh, the webinar will be posted online uh, sometime in the next week or so, and by all means you can go back to this webinar and you can uh, look for the specific states where you do business today. Another excellent website is the Efficient Window Collaborative. Uh, it's pretty much everything there is to know about uh, performance of windows, but it has an excellent section on uh, rebates and incentive programs. And here's just one example page uh, from that uh, website. On the Efficient Window Collaborative, there are 71 incentive programs that specifically require Energy Star windows and 44 states on this website that offer a variety of incentive programs from utility rebates to low-cost loans for energy efficient upgrades. The rebates have a broad range in terms of uh, dollar value, anything from 25 cents a square foot up to $8 a square foot. Uh, keep in mind that many of them have a cap. Uh, I, I notice on these uh, websites that it's fairly common to have a $500 cap for the project. So even though it may be $8 a square foot, uh, it's going to top out in many cases at uh, $500. And uh, a number of sites have already started to offer enhanced rebates for windows that exceed Energy Star version 5. So again, if you have the capability to produce a most efficient window, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to find enhanced rebates for those types of products. Carrie? Great. Let's get one more poll question in before we cover the rebates available in each individual state. How important are these rebate programs to your customers when choosing Windows? A, not important, B, somewhat important, or C, extremely important? Go ahead and take a couple seconds to answer the question and then make sure you hit the submit button. And we'll wait for the results to tally, just a second. And it looks like um, most of you feel that C, extremely important, um, is the feeling that how important rebate programs are to your customers when choosing Windows. So um, Rick, let's dive into this a little bit. Sure. I, I think that uh, maybe even more important than just the monetary benefit of having a rebate uh, for your consumer, because we all know that anything that defers a little bit of the cost represents two potential opportunities. One, that you uh, can sell your window for um, maybe a slightly higher price in some cases, or two, that you can uh, convince a consumer that it's worth upgrading from maybe a non-Energy Star product to an Energy Star product, or all the way up to uh, a most efficient product from just an Energy Star qualified product. So anything that... Uh, causes the consumer to make that decision to leave just pure price off the table and look for performance, uh, I think is a good thing. So I think from that point of view, this is an opportunity. I'm going to show you uh, how these rebates might plug into that payback analysis that EPA has done as well, which I think is another compelling way to present information. Now, we're all concerned with the FTC and its position on some of the types of, of uh, commitments or advertisements we can make, but uh, let's just say that anything we can do to help a consumer understand the relevant cost difference between the product that they're purchasing and maybe the, the lowest cost product in the marketplace is a good thing. So first I'm just going to review a number of the programs that I looked up, uh, again, using the link on the dsire.org website, uh, and really here it, just an attempt to show how different some of these programs are and what the relevant types of incentives might be that, uh, that you'd find. So uh, this is the uh, Southwestern uh, Utilities uh, Group, AEP, and they're offering a rebate of $1.60 per square foot for Energy Star labeled windows. So if you happen to be in the, uh, in the utility distribution region of this particular uh, utility, then here's one example. There are literally hundreds of utility uh, rebate uh, available out there. And in fact, I'd also suggest or encourage you uh, to even contact utilities that you don't see listed because quite often they have performance rebates that are not based on any individual home improvement. So you might find a rebate for a 10% reduction in energy consumption for a given project 
but they don't actually spell out what the criteria are for the types of building materials that might go into that. So again, it's worth in many cases talking to the actual utilities in your market area. California has dozens of programs. And this is just one example. This is Anaheim, which is a very big uh, distribution area, uh, public utility rebate, and it's a dollar a square foot for Energy Star labeled windows. This one does not have a cap. So depending on how many windows are in the home, uh, this could represent a sizable potential savings. Here's one from Longwood, Florida, and it's a municipal incentive. It's not sponsored by a utility. It's sponsored by the municipality, and it has a cap of $500, and the only criteria on the website is energy-efficient windows. So how you define that, I guess, would be up for uh, discussion, but uh, $500 rebate. Uh, here's uh, another one. Uh, it's a municipality, uh, Blakely Lane, and it's a weatherization program. There are quite a few of those, by the way, that are still in effect uh, from from the uh, American weatherization uh, tax credits that have been reduced down to municipal uh, incentive programs. And this is a rebate of $6 per square foot uh, up to $500 for energy efficient windows. And again, this is in the south, so the Energy Star criteria here uh, doesn't necessarily pose much of a difficulty for people that are marketing into the Florida market, but in this specific case, they're calling out a 30-30 window. Uh, again, probably a little bit of a hangover from the ARA tax credit. And then uh, here's an example of a loan program in Alaska. So again, not a lot of detail here, uh, but they're offering low-interest, no-interest loans uh, for uh, projects that improve the energy efficiency uh, of pre-existing and new construction projects. So again, just, uh, just a small selection. Uh, it's probably best for you to look in the specific markets and states where you uh, sell product uh, to see what the impact would be on your business. But I said I would come back to this example of the utility rebate, and we plug it into the same equation that was used by EPA to come up with their payback analysis. So this is that same home in Binghamton, New York, and we took our same $34 incremental cost plus our $20 upgrade from code times 22 windows for the same amount of savings, $158.33 per year, but we subtracted out the uh, rebate. And what that actually did is it took us from, if you recall, a 7.5 year payback down to a 4.3 year payback. Now, what consumer uh, confronted with a 4.3 year payback wouldn't choose to upgrade their windows to a higher performance standard? So in conclusion, uh, not only do consumers and builders trust Energy Star, but the utilities and the states and municipalities are also relying on Energy Star to set a lot of the criteria for the financial incentives that they use. And I expect that will continue to escalate. Uh, projections over the next few years are that the majority of incentives, if any, are going to come predominantly from the utilities. And the utilities are going to continue to look to Energy Star as criteria uh, to police and, and monitor the performance requirements for their uh, projects. 37 states have more than 198 rebate programs offered by utilities, states, municipalities. So again, a good opportunity to uh, seek out those programs that would impact your market regions. More than 70 programs require Energy Star labeled window products to qualify for incentives. And again, I think just the early stages of most efficient uh, are starting to creep in and, and we'll probably see more of an impact from that as we go forward through the next two to three year cycle. And the rebates, some very small, from $0.25 cents a square foot up to $8 a square foot, and many with caps, but still significant enough in many cases to actually offset that uh, payback period. And then again, reminding you that uh, sites such as DSIRE.org and Efficient Window Collaborative uh, are excellent resources if you're looking for programs in, in your area. And again, uh, rebates can potentially reduce the payback period as calculated by EPA to less than five years in, uh, in many cases. Terry? Thanks, Rick. So as I mentioned earlier, our next webinar is about Quantic-specific solutions will be after glass build. We'd love to hear your thoughts on what information you will find mo most useful for those. 
This concludes the presentation portion of our webinar. We'll be starting our Q&A session in just a minute. Please su submit your questions by using the Q&A feature to the right, or you can email them to quantxpr at quantix.com if you don't have any questions right offhand. Thank you again for attending, and have a wonderful day.